The astronomers and engineers who conceived Hubble knew that this space telescope flying almost 600 kilometers above the Earth's image distorting atmosphere would push back the frontiers of science. Despite its relatively modest 2.4 meter main mirror, it would be sure to surpass much larger ground-based telescopes. But could anyone imagine that this space telescope, capable of observing not just in the visible but also near-infrared and ultraviolet light, would see so far back in time and achieve so much? On two occasions, in 1995 and 2004, Hubble plunged into the past, viewing a tiny, apparently empty part of the sky, but in fact populated by thousands of galaxies at different stages of evolution, some of them 13 billion years old. In the infinity of all those lights, everyone surmised that there must be many other civilizations like our own. Evolution has been a key word for Hubble. In this image, a baby galaxy called Izviki 18, composed essentially of hydrogen and helium with very few heavy elements, has not yet given birth to many stars. Those present are but one billion years old compared to most other galaxies ten times older. One of the earliest and most startling pictures from Hubble is the classic image, the pillars of creation in the Eagle Nebula. A similar view of a turbulent cosmic column in the Carina Nebula has been issued to celebrate Hubble's 20th anniversary. The dramatic image captures the chaotic activity in a pillar of gas three light years tall where the gas and the dust is being eaten away by the light of nearby stars. Inside the dense pinnacle, fledgling stars are forming and generating the twirling jets of gas. From stars to their planets, in our solar system, Hubble has offered close-up views, for instance, of Pluto's northern hemisphere, its face redder and brighter than in previous images, probably due to melting ice on its pole on the sunward side. Much further away, one of the sharpest optical images of an exoplanet was taken in the disk of dust around a star called Fomalhaut. The sharp break in the disk had already suggested the presence of a planet sweeping through. Hubble has twice confirmed its presence, a true feat given the extremely weak light from the planet, one billion times less bright than its parent star. Hubble has even been able to analyze the composition of the atmosphere of a few exoplanets and detect the presence of chemicals such as sodium and methane. From births to deaths, the Crab Nebula shows the remains of a star that exploded as a supernova in 1054, seen at the time by Chinese astronomers. The outer parts of the former star form this fine philandrous net. At its center, the ultra-dense core of the star has become a pulsar with a mass like that of our sun, but in a sphere just 10 kilometers in diameter, casting X-rays and radio waves as it rotates 33 times every second. The American astronomer Edwin Hubble had demonstrated that the universe is expanding. The spacecraft that bears his name has also contributed to a greater understanding of the laws that govern the universe. The theory of general relativity says that mass influences light. The space telescope has shown this many times. The image of Abel 370 shows light rays from distant galaxies being amplified and bent by this extremely massive and compact galaxy cluster that is five times closer. The small arc-like curves highlight what is now called a gravitational mirage. Last year, Thank astronauts you. visited the Hubble Space Telescope seven, for the fifth eight, time four. and the last with the Space Shuttle. Each servicing mission correcting its initial short-sightedness, maintaining the spacecraft systems and changing or upgrading its science images and spectrographs has been a key element in this 20 long years of success. Seeing the telescope drift away was an intensely emotional moment. Today, astronomers know that it will be delivering its images at least until 2014, perhaps longer, 
and when okay, Hubble finally bows out, say, its successor, the James Webb Space Telescope, another okay, joint NASA ESA mission, will be ready to spread its wings and offer even more fabulous views of our universe. It's done essentially all the things that it was designed to do quite early on, uh, but in fact it's done many things that it was not designed to do and indeed were not even thought of when Hubble was conceived. And I think uh, for, for those of us working in the project to watch the developments of new subject areas that Hubble has been able to well, revolutionize in some cases has been really very exciting. Uh, Hubble has exceeded our expectations by large factors. This ability to see galaxies very early in the history of the universe was something which was a, a, perhaps a surprise and has been very well exploited by, by Hubble. And when I started doing astronomy and when Hubble was launched, you know, the, the, the most distant objects were nowhere near what we would call the beginning of the universe. They were a long way away. And so the idea of actually seeing something as it existed within the first 10% of the age of the universe was entirely novel and the deep fields have uh, revolutionized our view of this very early history. What I find particularly uh, interesting is you can use a telescope like Hubble to look at the very distant universe. You take a very deep exposure and you see these galaxies actually living their lives as they, as they actually happened in the, in the first 10% of the age of the universe. And then you can switch and you can look at a nearby galaxy and you can see the fossil records of that process. Not the same galaxy, of course, but you, so you, you're, you're, you're seeing it as it, it's like getting a powerful pair of binoculars and looking and seeing dinosaurs running around and then going to the local museum and seeing the fossilized skeletons. So the telescope really is a time machine. It's a wonderful idea. You can look in the, in the visible light and you can see the glowing gases. You can see the young stars glowing blue. You move into the infrared and you see through a lot of the dust, which obscures a lot of the hidden stuff that you, you couldn't see in the optical spectrum. So it's almost like taking a, an X-ray image as well. You look through the obscuration and you see the skeleton behind it. So with this one camera, you can see a whole range of properties of these uh, regions in, in spectacular detail. I think the, the European astronomers have had an enormous uh, benefit from, from Hubble in, in many, many different ways. Uh, in open competition with people throughout the world, mostly from the US, the Europeans have been able to win always more than the 15% of the share of the time that they were guaranteed, if you like, with the original ESA NASA agreement. Uh, they've always done more than that. Uh, but I think the benefits have actually been more profound than that. If you look at the way science is done now, uh, a lot of the science is done in large collaborations. The, many of these collaborations are worldwide, certainly transatlantic. So there's a tremendous mix, mixture of uh, communities going on. And so the, uh, the, the discoveries that have been made as part of these large scientific collaborations have been of enormous benefit to Europe. Just watching this release and watching the, the, the telescope drift off into space always brings tears to my eyes. It's a wonderful moment. And if you count up the amount of human effort that went into that moment, you know, the operation of the, 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 the building of the telescope, the operation of the telescope for 20 years in space, the tremendous infrastructure on the ground that was necessary to perform that operation, and all the people who've spent you know, as you say, very large lengths of their lives pushing this project forwards. It's a very, it's a very emotional experience and it's, it's really, it is part of history. It's a major historical event. It's only one million data sets and you can put the raw data of the Hubble archive onto this hard disk if you really want to. So in terms of data volume, it's not that big, but it's in terms of the quality of the data, it's, it's absolutely tremendous. This will stay f the, the measuring rod for the next 20 years, Hubble. There's some scientific constraints, obviously, I mean, because these images are taken in uh, specific filters, specific wavelengths, so we know more or less which colors our eyes would perceive these, these wavelengths. 
but after that there's some there's some uh, big range of of possibilities where where the artists can can go and produce these images so there's this balance between well the scientific correctness of an image and well what's what the artist feels as what's pleasing so so we have to balance these two things so estas imagens são produzidas uh, a partir de, de diferentes imagens produzidas com filtros que capturam a luz em frequências muito específicas. E estas frequências produzem ou produziriam no nosso olho uma resposta, ou uma cor uh, que nós sabemos qual seria, não é? Mas quando juntamos estas, estas imagens, uh, uma imagem uh, a cores como estas que vemos aqui, uh, Existe um, 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 um espectro uh, de, 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 de imagens finais que eventualmente poderíamos produzir, que é o artista que tem que, uh, de certa maneira, um, interpretar e dar um bocadinho da sua, da sua própria uh, interpretação estética de como é que seria essa imagem no final, apesar de nós termos uma certa ideia de como é que ela seria. Uh, cada pessoa, cada artista faria esta imagem de uma maneira diferente, em certa medida, não é? dentro dessas balizas científicas.